Hello! So this video was intended to be a chapter of a much longer video about selling as a freelancer, but I've decided to make it a standalone video called Brick by Brick, which is also about freelancing, but it's about the sort of geopolitical social framing of how we get orders as freelancers. I'm just going to share a few anecdotal bits of evidence, which I think you might find interesting. So in 2022, something more major than any natural disaster happened. And for the most part, it did not generate any noise by itself. For some, it wasn't a disaster, but it arguably marked the end of the G7 economies or countries as the dominant players in the world. In 2022, the BRIC economies, Brazil, Russia, India and China, a block of arguably developing countries, surpassed for the first time the GDP of the established G7 countries in their collective contribution to global GDP by purchasing power parity. You probably read the headlines, you probably read some stories, listened to some podcasts, watched some videos on this. And you might have heard that the bloc is set to welcome six new members at the beginning of 2024, Ethiopia, Argentina, Egypt, UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. Purchasing power might be good at telling economists and ordinary lay people how much people in Brazil, Russia, India, China, or South Africa, or in fact anywhere else, how much they have to spend does provide a good comparison of the absolute purchasing power of countries' currencies and that's why it's used. My point is that purchasing power parity matters when you're a freelancer who is present in the global marketplace. And so, as an anecdote for you, in August for the first time, I've made $1,300 in extra income, that's over the last six weeks or so, as a freelancer from one client who had money from outside the G7, and that's for the first time ever. Now, I don't know the source of his income, but I do know that he approached me first to do a number of slightly technical writing tasks, which I can't really talk about due to a non-disclosure agreement. And so, more recently, my biggest returning clients have been both quite wealthy, internationally mobile people who have Chinese or Emirati money behind them, and they might be living or New York or London at the time by what they tell me, but their money comes from elsewhere. When you create a Fiverr account, for example, you can register the country or territory that you're from, but I think it's a self-selecting thing, so that can be slightly misleading. So what I'm saying here is it's good to have some awareness of your audience and wider trends in the world or in politics and things like that. I'm not saying deliberately charge more because you suspect you're talking to someone who's wealthier. What I'm saying is that their attitude to spending money could be very different and more free than what you're used to. It could be like pushing on an open door, as goes the expression, if you've heard that. If you're looking to negotiate for more, they might just be more willing to spend. And this is just an anecdotal experience. It doesn't mean that the bulk of my clients haven't been from the US or the UK. They have, and that's more than a third, in fact. After all, I'm an English speaker, unless I want to try and learn Arabic or Mandarin, which I might, but I'm not very good at learning languages. And it also doesn't mean Americans or Europeans don't pay well, or that you can't make a good living freelancing here either. It's just something to think about. A shifting world order has a day-to-day -day reality that is decided in transactions after all. So what I'm saying is position yourself and your skills in front of that global audience on websites like Fiverr or Upwork or others that I don't even know about and that you may know about. I'd look forward to hearing from you if you are getting orders from these kinds of countries. So position yourself and your skills, as bad and obvious as that might sound, because you don't know who's viewing your profile. And of course, it almost goes without saying that this doesn't mean these clients are easy uh, when it comes to freelancing money or someone to exploit, as I've said, but it does go to show that abundance may be beyond your immediate backyard. And Emirati and Chinese clients, of course, they expect high standards and they will definitely let you know when they are dissatisfied. I would like to hear from you if this experience, this, these anecdotes are similar to what you've experienced more recently. And I will catch you in a similar video very soon. Thank you.